promise I'm gonna take you through my perspective English and language arts curricula. I have grade six here to show you, so stick around. Welcome back friends, if you're brand new to my channel, my name is Arlene with Arlene and Company. And as I said before, I have a flip through and review for you guys and it's my perspective, English and language arts. And before I actually say review, I'm gonna say first impressions because normally um, things that I call review is something I have really good um, familiarity with and have been using it for a few years and it's just like a new level or a new product um, from the same line and brand. And I feel comfortable saying this is a review. Here, this is our first time using my perspective. So these are my first impressions um, and my thoughts on it um, as of right now. So obviously in um, a few months or so or in our quarterly updates, I'll let you know how we're liking it and how um, it's implementing. Um, know that this, my perspective, has some mixed reviews from classroom teachers. This is a traditional um, program that you find in um, middle schools um, in public school settings and stuff like that. Um, and I was really excited to get my hands on it. There is a big online portion to this and that's more, mostly where I saw the complaints is classroom teachers having to handle multiple students of the online platform that didn't exactly work the way that they wanted to. So that's the main complaints that I saw about. Um, some were like the stories, they just thought they weren't as engaging or things like that. So far that has not been our case. Um, and the online portion, because I'm only managing one child with this, is not an issue at all. I can imagine how it'd be um, overwhelming and um, hard to navigate when it's like multiple. Um, so just wanted to put that out there. Now my perspective, English and language are this is the teacher edition and then this is the student notebook, which is a big one as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna um, show you what this looks like, give you a glimpse inside of the online portion. The online component has an endless amount of resources. Like it's so much, so many videos. So like, you know, any like grammatical, like parts of speech or stuff. There's a video for that. There's all kinds of stuff that you can do. And I'm gonna show you um, the cool little thing that it has there. I'm gonna move my teapot. You don't need to see my teapot, do you? All right, so this is from, um, I think they were, forget the who they were previously and I'm probably gonna say it wrong wrong with Savas Learning Company. You can purchase one of the problems with the traditional textbook types of curricula is that you need a teacher license to be able to um, purchase it from the publisher themselves or all that jazz. Um, with this, it's not the case. They actually have like um, Rainbow Resource is allotted to sell it. And I don't know who else, but I purchased from Rainbow Resource is my go-to. And I purchased the, the online, online um, component. I think the online um, gives me access to it for a year. Um, my perspective has like um, pretty much the language arts putting in their ch the child's voice and things that are important to them or should be important to them and things like putting their voice into it, um, how they analyze the text and how they're reading through everything and um, making it relatable. So that's where the my perspective comes from. There is, there were, oh, that's where, there were Prentice Hall before. So if you're um, familiar with Prentice Hall's workbook, textbooks and things like that, that's who they were before, before Sava's. Savas, I don't know how you say that, um, and Scott's Forsman um, as well. So I do um, have enjoyed some of their textbooks in the past as well from other programs. Um, so I was like, excited to find this middle school one. You have the author's perspective. So here are the authors for this particular level. So you can see their credentials, which I always appreciate, especially with an English language arts curricula. I like to know what you bring to the table. Um, and that's just me, that's something that is important to me. So unit um, unit one, these are divided by different units and you'll um, have a certain theme. The text um, on it is going to follow that theme. The, what I love about these like textbook literature, English language art programs is that you do not have to complete the entire book to do, be able to do the lessons. And that was where we were falling because our histories and science and stuff like that were very literature heavy. So when we have a very literature heavy language arts, you know, I wanted to have a fallback plan or having something else in line that wouldn't require us to have to finish a piece of literature to be able to do the work. 
So here you have an excerpt from, from the literature or a condensed short story of it. So here you have the unit introduction, the whole class learning. Again, there is gonna be some parts that are specific to classroom teachers that you are welcome to ignore or implement it for your kiddos, especially if you're teaching more than one in this current level or whatever not. So you have whole class um, learning, anchor text, media, and then small group learning. So know that you don't have to do each component because this giving you a lot to work with um, because it's like set up for a classroom environment. Then independent learning, performance-based assessment, unit reflection, and then the digital aspect. So um, when you see the, the icon, basically you take a picture with your device, whether it's iPad or whatever, and it brings them straight to the, uh, the page, whether it's a video, whether it's an audio recording, whether it reads it to your child. So you have a child that's dyslexic and stuff like that, but you're dealing with multiple ages and you're kind of spread thin, um, and they struggle with reading their own material, even if they're in middle school. They can just scan it and it will read it to them. Fantastic for dyslexia, fantastic. Um, here, unit two is the animal allies. My daughter is really excited about getting to unit two. Um, and then, so Same. each unit is focuses on an engaging topic related to essential question. So childhood is that question. So an essential question um, frames all unit studies and discussions. All unit activities are backward designed to the performance-based assessment. So here um, is the breakdown. So here it will show you unit two is animal allies. So you have launch text introduces the perspective of the unit. And then you have here the whole class learning teachers lead and share reading experience, providing modeling and support as students begin to exploring the perspective. So this definitely you can um, condense it to just being for um, directed to one child. Students encounter diverse perspectives. And then here students self reflect to the text to explore aspects of the unit topic. And then they share. Um, you have modern technology is unit three um, and launch tech models with a mode of writing that will be at the core of the performance based assessment. So right here from the beginning, it's going to model what they're looking for at the end. So here they're going to do an essay and oral presentation. So it's from the beginning, it's going to model what they're going to do. So they have a that rich model array of media selections, performance text, builds tour and prepare the students for the unit performance test. So at the end of the unit, you're expected to do some type of project or um, writing project or whatever it may be. Um, but it's building up to it um, in a great pace, not too slow and not too fast, in my opinion. Comparing a tax and media version of classic literature deep, um, deepens the learning experience and develops critical skills. And that, again, is part of the anchor test. Like, you're going to compare um, this drama with uh, a, another one. So you're going to have... Um, the Phantom um, Tobu Fact 1, the Phantom Tobu Fact 2, and then um, the multimedia per, um, progression. So, and sometimes they, you're comparing two pieces of literature to each other. Um, the reason I didn't go with um, Journeys with my daughter was because Journeys it ends in grade six. And because of my daughter's different learning, um, uh, learning differences, I wanted something that it was our, uh, like, you know, our, our backbone. Um, that she can continue on. Now, my perspective goes all the way through high school. So they have levels all the way through high school. Um, journey is, I think it's awesome, but it only goes to grade six. Um, graphic novels brings relevance and engagement for classrooms. So this is the unit five is exploration. Anyways, I'll just to give you an idea. Um, unit reflections allow students to revisit learning goals um, and go from there. So you have the five units on here. You have the student-centered learning, unit introduction, the whole class we talked about, small group, and all that jazz we already know. So these are all the components that every single unit is going to be framed as. So it's predictable and um, it's easy for uh, open and go status if you are, I wouldn't say exactly all open and go because if you want to imp uh, implement the interactive uh, multimedia aspects, you wanna look at that and arrange it in a way that you can see what you need to get to online. So interactive student edition, um, so here's what we were talking about. You have the interactive uh, notebook, and I will show you that um, at the end of how uh, what that goes with that. When you see this symbol, these are the bounce page, um, and you just scan it and um, go from there. It teaches you how like to annotate, 
um, access to um, provides easy access to background author and standards and inf information and things like that so if that's important to you then you have the closed reading closed reading routine, routine. so you, um, your child learns how to read something closely and examine and analyze some um, specific parts of it so students apply first read routines as they independently read and annotate text and again it just breaks out every single section of how this is going to do so what I do recommend if this is something that you would like to add is that you spend a good amount of time familiarizing yourself with it before you open it and present it to your child because if you just go um, without like really digging into the introduction and the online component as well um, you're just kind of setting up yourself to fail because it, it may be unfamiliar unless you have been a classroom teacher I, I would allow yourself that learning curve before presenting it to your child um, assessment to inform instruction, year-long assessment, beginning mid-year tests, and end-of-year tests, and then unit-level assessment. Um, so you have selection activities, formative assessments, selection tests, performance tests, unit tests, and all that. Again, you don't have to do everything, but it's there available for you, especially if you are on a track that you want to keep your um, child um, um, not just on par with their counterparts and stuff like that in public school but you have a game plan for them to have the opportunity to smoothly transition to a traditional setting such as college or maybe um this is a, a trend um you know intermittent thing for you then this is a, a great resource to continue with that because it's similar to what they're doing in school um english language support teaching so this is where you have your online database so I purchased this from Rainbow Resource. So the online portion has like a card that Rainbow Resource um, includes in their bundle. And then um, they go ahead and give you access for about, I think a year or a little bit over a year um, to the grade and some extras that you went ahead and purchased. Um, so when you log in, you're gonna have all these options products. You can set this up as a class so you can give your children, whoever's using it, access from their end. I'm not doing any of that, um, but obviously this is meant for classroom teachers or was developed for that. Um, what I do here is you can see the program. I just wanted to browse content, but you can see my library is gonna be empty. Uh, because I'm not doing all the extra stuff that um, classroom teachers do, like building a test. You can build your own tests on here, um, just to quickly show you how that looks. And um, you can have it all populated here in report. But this is, let me just show you how it comes up. So here, I want to browse content, manage library, or view reports. So we're going to go to browse content like we were before. And here I have access to my perspective ELA National Grade 6. I'm going to tick that off but I also have access to where um, it's checked off to test only I'm gonna uncheck that and let you guys see an idea of everything else um, but you do see some other things like high school here well, let's just click that just for the fun of it um, and this is an annotation practice for high school and you see it um, a middle school one as well and then show some samples, a video, so you can get a little bit of ideas of the video. So if you're having trouble explaining something to your kiddo, or maybe they're just not understanding it the way that you're explaining it, there is several videos for our different parts here, and um, my kiddos have found them engaging enough. Many words have both denotations and connotations. A denotation is the dictionary definition. A connotation is an emotion or association that the words... So they have these, and then they also have like some that are cartoon explanations, but they're not childish cult, um, cartoons. You know, um, evaluate sources for bias. Um, again, I'm just trying to give you an idea of what you see. This is a skills video. Evaluate sources for bias. So the skills video is going to have more like, you know, the flowing text and things like that. And it's not going to be like super distracting or anything like that. Consider your audience things. that um, you're having some difficulty with or they're just not getting it. Um, you can Consider look at this. Audience. Here we so go. here's the cartoon Coming lines. up, one fine literary analysis of... One of my all-time favorite this books. This is also one of the things I really like about the online part. 
it's if um, you struggle for essay prompts or you want them to have more practice with writing, you can go on here. So this is descriptive. This sets the category. Think of a day that was memorable because of the weather, such as summer thunderstorm, a dreary winter winter day, a sun a sunny summer morning. Describe the weather and then describe the mood of that weather created. So they're very detailed um, types of prompts. They're not just like, you know, write about your dog, you know, or things like that. So I appreciate that and I appreciate the thoroughness of it. So he, this is a how-to how type of essay. So write a how-to essay in which you provide step-by-step -step directions for operating a household appliance. Include adequate detail and description so that the person who is totally unfamiliar with the product will be able to use it. So I really do appreciate the detailness of their prompts. Um, so that's a big plus for me. Um, and these are things that you can weave in and out. And you have like an online test if you want to do that or you can just you can look by media type oh, there's a car running here you can look at content category uh, then by grade by theme you know author study or things like that skill teaching opportunities um, cross-curricular connections um, if you need some Spanish, um, maybe your kiddo's first language is Spanish, um, but that's great for like classroom teachers. Comprehension skills, uh, test um, features, and um, genres. So um, let's see, let's look at realistic fiction. And here is a level text. text. Here's just like further instructions on how to do that and then it provides for extra practice. So you can go ahead right here, you can see that you can download it and then print it or send it or however you would like to do. So they have that. Um, I just wanted to give you that and Brown Girl Dreaming is something that is discussed there. Um, this is a level text. These are, if you were doing that, it provides you with a test. Um, look at the essential question making meaning, language development affected expression, and then you have all about exploration right here. It seems that we humans have a propensity for itchy speech. So here you can go under digital novels if you want some extra novels to put. Um, so this is something we're familiar with. The Winds of Willow, this is in Blossom and Root. And you can go ahead and open, and it just opens like a book. So you say, read now, and you go from here. So this is, again, something that your kiddo can have access to. And each book is in its own little format. So this is super tiny. <laughs> Maybe you can zoom it in. There you go in here that it's like impossible i would just need to do a video just on the online um section of this because there's just so much um that is included so you have like extra worksheet extra practice extra instructions extra novels extra like essays um prompts anything that you can think of it's basically most likely in here do you have a learning curve to know how to navigate this and how to access everything? Yeah, for sure. You could also search for it and see if you know you want to search for resources for adverb and um, do that. And then um, it will pop up whatever you need. So if you want to just search for something, adverbs, grammar tutorial, maybe you want to do that and um, incorporate it for your lesson. So even though the textbook is just like very self-explanatory and I would not call it open and go, um, it can be, but then again, there's extra stuff you can pull in and sometimes that you should pull in um, that would require a little prep Adverbs. on your end. At the pitcher's mound, Ty instantly decides to pitch a curveball, his favorite. So the videos are not all the same, like the same characters all the time or the same thing. So I think that helps keep it engaging um, as well. like another worksheet that has to do with adjectives and adverbs. And if you want to have that content, upload your own content, add links to um, online media, edit resources or assessment. All programs are specific and, but, and stuff like that. You can find those lesson plans in 
the online part too. So I think that's freaking awesome. Teaching with trade books, integrating trade books with my perspective. These titles provide students with another perspective on the topic of animal allies. So these are other additional things. And these also have um, lesson plans, so addition, uh, additional lesson plans with it. So you have the Jungle Book, Where the Red Fern Grows, and Black Beauty. And um, these are the how like it connects to the essential questions. Again, and here's your pacing guide. If that is something that's important to you to pace, and if maybe you're not a year-round homeschooler and you're trying to finish at 36 weeks, this is gives you a guidance of how to pace that. Um, and then it goes through each unit and tells you the suggested trade books and the suggested lesson plans for additional supplemental uh, materials. So that is what that, like Unit 4's Imagination um, and Unit 5 um, Exploration. Um, then here you have the Sanders correlation. If that's something that is important to you, you'll be able to um, see it there. And then it continues on the standards correlations that are so large. If you never printed standards before for your state, my, it, it's, it's big. <laughs> All right, so here's the unit one. You feel like, oh my goodness, that's all introduction. Yeah, all this is the introduction. It's like a lot, right? Um, so here's your first unit, which is the childhood. Um, you're gonna have a mirror image of this here um, versus on um, your kiddos um, workbook. And um, it's three hole punch, so if you wanna put it in a really big binder, you can go ahead and do that. Let me just skip on over to something she has not done because I don't show her work unless I'm specifically told I can. Not in unit two yet, we're still in unit one. All right, so unit two, animal allies. Animals and people can form unique relationships. How can these relationships have both animal and person? So here is your essential question. Discuss it and scan for multimedia. So right here, uh, your student would just scan that, um, just like you're scanning a QR code, and it will take them to, uh, I think this was a video, yes. So write a response before sharing your ideas. Is the relationship between animals and people truly a special question bond? here? The launch text of what is going to be reading buddies, um, whole class, small group, independent, and all that. Presentation, so. review, evidence of an explanatory essay. Those tells you from the get-go what their assignment is going to be, what you're building up for at the end of the unit. So they're prepared for it and they have their mindset already on that. So the prompt here, how can animals and people help one another? Um, and that would be like the essay um, prompt. Unit goals, this is something that they do themselves. My daughter actually really enjoys this. Um, vocabulary, um, how it's, I, I love how they have the mentor sentences. Um, and this is the way they do it. They predict the meaning based on the mentor sentences. So if you saw my journeys, um, um, one, they used a picture um, to um, give them a clue of what the word means um, with it. So I really like that. But I like how this has the word um, and, you know, prefix or suffix or whatever. And then the mentor sentences and they predict the meaning of it. And then they find out what the actual meaning is, related words and such. Um, so here they have their reading assignment for um, for this one and it has the notes here so they can learn to annotate things and take you know pull out clues from the text they're also numbered here so if there's something specific to a certain area they can refer back to it word network for animals and allies um, so vocabulary of word network your online database if you need it and then they fill this out as they're reading um, reading them animal human relationships and then they fill these out and then it just goes over that I'm not gonna go over the whole thing but if um you don't want to have to use a separate notebook for everything there's ample space here to do whatever they're asking for you for example here's write a summary of reading buddies and then they give them a um, space here with some of the questions here and then quick write consider class discussion the video and the launch tech as you think about this prompt so it prepares them for the prompt beforehand so how can animals and people help one another and then here is a space for class learning and this is something maybe you can just do orally if you're feeling like this you know want to give them absolutely everything you have the concept of vocabulary um, you will encounter the following words as you read this excerpt from my life with the chimpanzees before reading note how familiar you are with each word so it's kind of like a scavenger hunt for them it makes I think it makes it more interesting because now here they're not writing what this words mean yet they're just writing how familiar they are from one through six. Six is least familiar. I'll give them a ranking or whatever. First, read the nonfiction because there were six words. That's why. 
first read the nonfiction, tells them what to notice first read and like the breakdown of it. So this is like very much like um, prepare them for like the traditional scope of how they would see things. And then here is a scan and that is, I'm pretty sure that scan just reads this story for them. But this is how long this story is, for example. Um, and then it has the definitions on the side. That's why you're predicting it from the beginning because you're gonna see something on the side. And here's like the close read notes and then things like that. And then here's a comprehension check. Uh, complete the following items after you finish your first read. So this is your first time reading it, what they would do. Um, and then it continues on. So you have the concept, word study. So you have the Latin suffix. Um, here's the grammar component for this. Read it, write it, and such. Um, you know, writing to sources. So obviously this is middle school so you're gonna go into deeper into those things um reflect on your writing um speaking and listening so about you know public presentation is big on that too um and then just just giving you an idea of how an actual all this is still the same unit so that's why it takes you a bit to get through Obviously five units is gonna take you through a school performance, just adds a little bit more videos if you have those visual learners and things like that. Um, you have the toolkit for close reading, writing, research, program resources. You have a glossary um, and you have it in English and in Spanish. So that's pretty rad and I like that because obviously for in classroom use that is very um, helpful. But here has like a model of a lot of the things. So the close reading for here, first read guide, notice, um, annotate, connect, and respond. Um, and then just gives them examples so they can model it in, and actually see it in um, you know concrete way um, and then it's just like the writing models and things like that and just giving them an example of what their writing goals should be towards uh, will i be using this as an, as an entirety absolutely not i was just you know we have so many resources um but i like having this um as something that we can um, incorporate like two three times a week um as well and will i use absolutely everything on it no um, but can you use it by itself? Yes, and I'll point out some other things um, too. So here are the units for that. So here um, for your teacher guide, you're gonna see the digital perspectives, audio, video, document, annotation highlights, EL highlights, and online assessments. Um, and you have a copy of what you just saw in the student notebook. And then here you will see um, the definitions, your answers key is all on here. So you don't have to go back and forth trying to find everything for yourself. If you don't know it, it's gonna be right on there. You're gonna have the story that your student is reading, especially if they're doing independent work and you need to reference back what they're answering on. Um, you can go ahead and do that. So this is a nonfiction narrative model and it's gonna explain all that to you and how you're introducing the lesson as well. You here is gonna have a sample of those writings of what you're, you know, if you may see, see your child's response and you're like, okay, is that good? Is that what I'm looking for? Then you have an example of what their response should be like modeling a little bit like not you know exactly but it gives you an idea right and then you go from there so here you have lesson resources and all these things that you are going to have on your hand so this is like from brown girl dreaming audio summaries and all that stuff is going to be um, something available for you for like planning section um personalized for learning the reading support if that's something that's needed and then here for example you go into your teaching so jump start first read prior to students first read tell them that they're going to read poetry so here's very very much scripted for you you don't have to follow it as is but it's scripted um and it tells you like okay here's jump start here's how you're presenting the lesson say this say that so if you're looking for that type of thing that is just like basically telling you exactly what to do there you go um and then here you have those um different perspectives and different um points and then it's like highlighted so you get to see you know personalized for learning teasing sections so you know this is like your teaching um, um, and then the planning so then here is gonna like okay these are the units and what we're gonna be presenting um, and you go from there so um, here's your teaching portion 
um, the comprehension check. The notebook part is something that you can give access to your kid to do. We're not doing that, but that is something that is available. So anyways, that is a look inside uh, my perspective grade six um, and the other levels follow the similar formats. Obviously the stories and things like that change. Um, we're still in the first unit and so far so good. Um, I'll give an update um, in our quarterly updates, but if you have been looking for something that you can have um, that was just like requires no other type of prep work like materials and things like that but just being familiar with the subject and um, what you're presenting and having pull any of the online add-ons that you want this is could be a, a great resource just for that stage of your life will i be dropping my literature base um like build your library and things like that no um, but I had foreseen this when I did our curriculum picks as being like a main and that I was going to stream down on our language arts literature based thing and that has not happened and I'm okay with it. So we're cool. Um, so, but we still want to use this and I think this is still great for like my bath health days because I deal with chronic illness and pain, um, to have something that is not that it's simple, but that doesn't require um, you know, a heavy involvement from me. Like I don't have to read the story. I don't have to prepare 10 projects for it or anything. I'm not saying Bill Joe Irish does that. I'm just saying in general. Um, so that is where which families I would recommend something like this for if you just want to have something um, a little bit more traditional that doesn't have all like the extra bells and whistles that we all love but sometimes is not feasible for us to do. Um, what I do feel is one of the weaknesses, not that it's weak, maybe it's because as homeschoolers we're used to having a very separate grammar program and having that daily um, extra stuff with grammar. However, um, grammar is in here. I just feel like um, it could be stronger, like it could be more, like a daily practice of grammar, if that makes sense. I do enjoy how Journeys has those extra handbooks. Um, and maybe I haven't found those extra worksheets and stuff like that on their online pause part that I can print out. So I would say that um, if you do this, I would definitely just keep like a simple like fixed grammar on hand too, just to have those daily grammar practices. I mean, me personally, you may look at this and say, well, that's more than enough grammar for us. Um, so there, there is where I see one of the um, weaknesses and stuff. So that is it. Um, let me know if you have any questions um, down below and don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.